What's up people? Tom here from the Geeky Drinkers. And this week we actually went, well I went on a road trip to the distillery of Dixon's Distilled Spirits in Guelph, Ontario. So take a look at what happened, coming up. What's up people? Tom here from the Geeky Drinkers and in this episode uh, we're going to actually show you a cool tour uh, of uh, Dixon's Distilled Spirits in Guelph. Uh, I had the privilege of going there this past Sunday. They had a sip and shop event. I uh, met a few staff members and had a really cool interview and learned a lot about the distillery process in the meantime. Uh, I still have my co-host, my little munchkin cat Sora. He's hanging out with me <laughs> apparently today. Wants to get in on the action. So take a look and you might learn something. What's up people? My name's Tom from the Geeky Drinkers and I'm joined here today with Miranda from Dixon's Distilled Spirits. And if you notice, this isn't the regular background that we have. So we're actually here in the distillery and we're gonna get some information on the process. Yeah, so I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of what we would do as a, a tour here at the distillery. Just, uh, just to explain how we make all of our spirits. So. Right here behind us, we have our mash tun. This is the start of the process. So if we want to start mashing right now, we put our water and our local grains in here. And what we're doing is cooking the grains to pull the starches out. You want to get as many starches out as possible and then convert them using enzymes to get as many sugars. So this is a four to five hour process. By the end, you should have a really sweet sugary mash. Awesome. Once this process is done, you're going to add your yeast and then pump your mash over into one of our fermenters. So we have three fermenters here. This is the longest part of the process. Uh, fermentation takes anywhere from five to 10 days. It really just depends oh, on the mash wow. itself. Okay. Yeah, long process. So yeah. if you want to <laughs> increase your capacity, you get more fermenters. So. Makes sense. Yeah. So what the yeast is going to do is eat the sugars that we created here, and it's going to make CO2 and alcohol. So the CO2 will exit through the top, the alcohol will stay in the mash. So. During this process, we're checking a lot of different things, temperature, pH levels, sugar levels, and alcohol levels. We want to see that alcohol come up as high as possible. So typically in our mash, we're going to get anywhere from 10 to 13% alcohol. Okay. Higher the better. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Flavor-wise here though, it is pretty gross, but that's okay. Yeah. The flavor is not going to come through here, it's when we distill. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's where the magic happens, yes. right? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to come on over here. Yeah, let's see. We've got our whole distillation system. So this is really where the magic happens. Yeah, it looks, it looks really, yeah. really cool. Yeah, almost like a flute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah. So to distill, it's a little complicated, but fairly simple in the same, same way. So you're gonna take that whole mash that you had and pop it into the pot still right here. So this is um, a, basically a large boiling tank. So yeah. we're gonna seal it down nice and tight and then heat it up. So essentially what we're doing here is boiling the alcohol. So the alcohol is going to rise up through the copper onion, it's that piece here, and then travel through the system. If so we're gonna, yeah. Sorry, is, is that called a copper onion? Yes it is. Is there any reason for that? I have no idea. Okay. But copper does have an important role in distilling. It's to remove sulfites. Oh, so if you didn't yeah, have copper yeah. throughout your system, you're going to have a funky smell, tasting spirit at the end. All right, which we don't, so, we don't want. No, none of that. So, All right, yeah let's, yeah. yeah, let's hear more. So to make gin, um, every spirit has a little bit of a different process. Different starting ingredient, different uh, column to use, and then there's stuff you can do after you distill. So okay. to make gin, it's actually a two-step process. Number one, you make vodka. You clean out your system, you put vodka in here, mm -hmm. and you put your botanicals up in here. So oh, okay. gin is essentially just redistilled vodka uh, through botanicals. Well, interesting. So I didn't it's, know that. it's actually known as one of the first infused vodkas. Very cool. The only difference between an infused vodka and a gin is the juniper berries. If there's no juniper, it's not gin. And juniper is what makes gin taste like a pine tree. Right? All right. Okay. So cool. here at Dixon's, we don't like that strong pine tree taste. So our <laughs> gins are on the non-traditional side. They're very light on the juniper. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah so neat. then we're on to the other columns. So we've got the whiskey and the two vodka columns. So they're uh, fairly no. similar um, in terms of what's happening. So yeah. a distillation is when your alcohol goes from liquid to vapor to liquid, changes forms. Yeah. So that change is going to happen within each one of these distillation chambers. Okay. Okay. So this one has four of them. What what you'll get out of this is a spirit between 75 and 85 percent alcohol, yeah, which is so pretty strong. A little, a little pretty, just, a, just a little strong. Yeah, but that's actually the lowest end of what we're making. 
Oh That's wow. That's the low end. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. So uh, when when you when it comes off at a lower percentage, you're going to maintain the smell and the flavor of what you're starting with. So for example, if we have a corn and rye mash, yep. it's going to taste a lot like corn and rye. So that's what we would call our moonshine, our unaged whiskey. Yep. You put that into a barrel and then it'll age, gets the flavor and the coloration from the charred wood, and that's what you call whiskey. All right. Okay? So there we go. Now, how, we now know how to make uh, moonshine and whiskey. And there we go. Okay. So Don't that, try this at home, guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so to make vodka, um, there are two rules. It's got to be starch based and it has to come off the still at 95% alcohol or higher. So why, has, why is that? So, well, I don't know actually. Okay. That's a good question. Um, but that's just the rules. So every spirit has a rule. Same as the gin, you have to have the juniper. Um, Canadian whiskey, for example, has to have rye in it. It has to be aged for three years minimum. Oh, I don't wow. know where okay. the rules originated, so to speak, but that's. This so they're for are. a reason. They're, yeah. they're accepted. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so to make um, our vodka, our Silver Creek vodka, it's 100% locally sourced corn mash. And then we're going to use both of these columns together. So okay. our spirit is coming up across through number one, through number two, and then to our condenser. So when we have 16 distillation chambers, you reach a level of purity where the vodka, well, the spirit is coming off at 95% or higher. Yeah. So once you go past 95%, you've reached a level of purity where um, the taste and smell of your starting ingredient is yep. removed. It's the cleanest and the purest yeah. of the alcohol. And I tried some of the vodka earlier, and no word of a lie, it's the best vodka that I've ever had. It's yeah. <laughs> so smooth and it's just incredible. I can't wait to have some more. Yeah. So so that's how we make uh, the raw spirit. But obviously, 95% alcohol is too strong to put it into bottle. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. So we have to do some finishing processes. So one of them, most important, is adding water. So we have a reverse osmosis water system here. So we're using very clean water um, to bring it down from that high percentage down to 40%. Okay. And it's got to be pretty much perfect, as we know. Absolutely. Everything's highly regulated. It's got to yep. be perfect. Um, and and then we can go on to the filtering. So distilling your spirits to a high percentage will get you a clean and pure spirit. Mm -hmm. Filtering is what gives you um, a nice smooth finish, yeah. less yeah. burn. Yeah. So we do a lot of carbon filtering and then paper filtering, and then we go on to bottling. So wow. grain to bottle is done in-house. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty much all of us. Very cool. Yeah. All right. So I uh, just had a couple quick questions for you. Um, what, uh, how do you find the process of Dixon's standing the product out from other products? Mm. Yeah, so I would say that packaging is really important. Well, absolutely. as far as just being on the shelf with no no one to say, hey, this is what it is, yep. um, packaging is really important. So we've actually just done a complete redesign of our brand. And they look fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so, they really do. So we're working on that, um, and as well as just having a really great product that you can stand behind. So yep. doing things local, high quality, and these are premium spirits, so you're, you're getting that good quality spirit. No yeah. Well, and it's yeah. uh, and like it sounds like you work a lot with uh, like with local like local farmers, I imagine, yeah. and a lot of local yeah. um, just like a, a lot of local services, which is fantastic. I, I know I like supporting that, and that kind of gives me a bit more of an incentive to again like shop local, like especially around the holiday season. That's that's one thing that I really check for. Um, what is what's the worst alcoholic drink you've ever had? Ooh. Worst. The worst. Oh. <laughs> um, oh, that's a good one. Uh, I would say for me, this is this is not representative of Dixon. This is just me. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, um, but uh, any kind of scotch, I find them. Okay. Very I'm not, I'm not a, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a huge yeah. scotch fan. I, I've got a bunch of friends that are. Yeah. So they're like the connoisseurs, and yeah. I'm just like. I'll have some. Yeah. Okay. I like more th things on the the either clean and crisp or yep. or on the sweeter side, very smooth. Yeah. That's that's more my side. But. That's kind of that's kind of where you lean. Yeah. I, I like I like very flavorful things yeah. as well. Um, the for me the worst drink that I've ever had and this is absolutely awful. Don't ever try this. <laughs> uh, I actually mix uh, tequila and Coca Cola. Oh. It tastes like rusty rusty pipes. It's the worst thing ever. Don't yeah. don't try it. Um, so that was that was mine. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't try it. It's bad. <laughs> uh, do you geek out about anything? 
Mm. What do you what do you kind of geek out about? And it doesn't necessarily have to be in kind of a traditional sense where you know, like video games or board games or comic books. Um, like alcohol, you can definitely geek out about alcohol. Yes. Okay. So I would say that it's definitely this. Yeah. So like, I gave you the short tour. Yep. I could talk about this all Just day. Just for day. days, eh? Talk your ear off. That's awesome. For sure. Yeah. Very cool. Now, what's your what's your favorite part about that? Like, do you like just the process, or like what what just locks your grip on? Uh, for me, it's being able to see go from a bag of grains mm -hmm. to something that's amazing that you can share with someone. You like, this is what I made in an amazing package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. So Very cool. the whole the whole thing, being able to not just be one part of the system, but to be the whole part. Yeah, like, be be involved in all of it. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, because that's what you get. Like, this is a very small business. Mm -hmm. um, there's three owners, myself, sales guy. Um, we've got some part-time helpers for, you know, events like this. Yep. Um, so we're very hands-on. I'm sure that also makes it a lot easier to uh, be able to brand a specific way because you there's, you know, that kind of tight-knit control yep. over it. Less moving pieces. It's, yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Very cool. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, for your time. I, I really, really appreciate that. It's really, really cool seeing, uh, seeing the distillery. Yeah. And we're gonna go buy some drinks, so look forward yeah. to some Dixon's Distilled Spirits on future episodes. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Anytime, thank you very much. So, you guys just saw the tour of Dixon's Distilled Spirits. Uh, it was cool, eh? Uh, my part, my favorite part was the was the flutes in the, the actual distillery pr uh, process. Um, so that was really, really cool. I did learn a whole lot of different things from that, and uh, I really, really want to uh, thank Dixon's once again um for allowing me to come in and uh and take the time out of their day and their event to uh to show me around and uh, answer some questions with me um so i really appreciate that thank you very much uh from uh everybody at the geeky drinkers to dixon's um if you guys know of any distilleries that you'd want to take a look at or that you would want us to go on tour to shoot a comment down below i would love to see uh what you guys would want to see now, keep in mind that I'm based in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. So if you're international or from the States, because I know we have a, a few viewers down there, I may not be able to get there, but we'll, we'll try. Definitely put it down below. Um, shoot a comment down below as well on what your favorite kind of alcohol is. I'm, I'm really, really curious to see what everybody, uh, what, your, what your favorite kind of alcohol is. Uh, so far, this is actually going to be my new favorite one. I had a sampling at the, the Sip and Shop event, and I honestly can't say enough good things about it. It's the smoothest vodka that I've ever tried. So look forward to more of that on the Geeky Drinkers. And as always, stay geeky, guys.